Hello my crafty loving friends, welcome to Repurpose My Way, I'm Shelly. Today I have some really fun Christmas winter projects for you. Uh, I had some old mason jars given to me. They were Atlas and Ball, I believe, with the little uh, hasp, I think it's called, or something like that. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so uh, it, it, they're really cool, little short jars and I decided I wanted to do a winter scene with them with some Epsom salt and all that so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. I also have a metal tree that I got from my friend Tracy that I had an inspiration piece and I tried to recreate it just a little bit and I think it did a pretty good job. It's not a traditional tree uh, as it's not green but I think it's going to look really cool set up in a prim home or something like that and I think it can even go like maybe a little bit longer maybe not just for Christmas maybe you could keep it up a little longer I don't know you be the judge of that uh, and then I have a really quick uh, tea kettle that I found over at the free shed at my dump uh, it's where people put the free stuff that they or the stuff that they don't want uh, and we have like this whole great big awesome shed for it um, and so it was just one without a lid and nobody was going to take it. I knew it was never going to get taken. I kept going over and it was there. And it's a beautiful red color, so I thought it would be great for Christmas decor. And I had a little tree, so I thought I would pop it in there and decorate it up. So I'm just going to show you how I do that. And uh, that's what the projects are going to be today. I already told you, so let's just not even show you the video. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. No, we'll actually show you the video. Glad you're here. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So I'm starting off with my little mason jar winter scene uh, project. And the first thing that I'm going to show you is just making these little tags that I'm going to add to them at the end. Um, they're a printable from uh, Etsy, and I will put a link down in the description for them. I can't remember the name of the shop right off the top of my head, but I'll have it right down in the description for you. Um, a really cute little snowman, little primitive looking snowman. And I just adjusted the size a little bit for what I wanted. I think they were smaller than what I have here and I wanted them a little bigger. So I <clears throat> saved the original, made a duplicate and the duplicate, I adjusted the size. That's how I usually do that. And that works out pretty well. So I just cut out, I had, f I don't know, four or five jars and I cut out the uh, the backer for the tags uh, on just a cardstock, just a brown cardstock that I had. And I just made them look like tags, just cut the, the edges off there on the top and um, went back as they were drying and put a little hole in there that I could put a little piece of red ribbon or raffia in there. So uh, they were very quick and easy. I mean, you could, I'm sure there are free printables that you could get. This one cost me, I don't know, maybe a couple dollars. It was not very much. And they're super cute. So um, I really love how they came out. Now, these mason jars my sister got for me. I don't know, at a yard sale or where she got them, but she brought me a whole bunch of them. So I'm just going to do four or five of them today. Uh, I'm going to do one for you here, but I did them up and I took them down to my booth before I got a final, final picture of them. But I will have what they look like at the end of this project. So I have a bag of Epsom salt and I'm going to use that to make it look like snow at the bottom of my jar. So I put about oh, an inch and a half or so of the Epsom salt down there, just enough so my little snowman that I picked up will sit nice and flat and my trees will stay in there. And um, it worked out really well and it looks like snow. So I'm uh, just going to get some of those lumps out of there and... The snowmen I got from, they came in a four pack from uh, Walmart. I got a red colored like hat and scarf and then the black hat and scarf. So I got eight of them and um, these uh, trees, I think I got these off Amazon. I'll have a link down in the description for those if you're interested. They're really nice little trees and they're all different sizes. 
So I'm just cutting off the hanger off the uh, hat of the snowman. You don't have to do that. You could leave it on there. I just didn't want to see it in my little winter scene. So I cut that off. And then I'm going to add my little trees. Um, sometimes it depended on uh, what size trees I used. Sometimes I had to put in the snowman first. Sometimes it was the tree first. It all depended on, like I said, the size of the tree. Some of them are a little rounder than others. But uh, I added one snowman and two trees, typically different sizes. So one in the very back was a little bit taller than the one in the front. And I tried to kind of change up the color. So there was a silver one and a green one. Um, you know, whatever floats your boat really with that, I guess. I just, just trying to change it up a little bit so they weren't all the same. Once I got everything into the jar the way I liked it, I put the top back on and uh, locked the bale up and then I just started adding decor. So I had some striped material and I ripped a piece of that off to make a nice tie and I also grabbed a little bit of greenery and some red berries and tied those onto the side as well. I have another one that I used a uh, cinnamon stick and I tied that on over the greenery and the red berries. Uh, really, the sky's the limit on this. Um, you could use some pine cones. I have a little bag sitting there on the table with all just different kinds of things that I've gathered over the years. And I just went through it and found what I had and just used what I had out of my stash, which I think is a really good way to just kind of use that stuff up. Uh, so then I tied my little tag on that I had added uh, onto the cardstock with Mod Podge and this is all done. It is so super cute, quick and easy. Now this little tea kettle is one that I got from my free shed at my dump. And I just love the color. It is a beautiful deep red color and it goes perfectly for the season that is here, which is Christmas uh, or it's almost here. Um, and I had this really cool little tree that I had picked up a while ago and I thought this would look great in there. Now it has a little strainer inside and I tried it with and without the strainer and I like it with the strainer in there. It helps the tree uh, stand up a little bit higher in the tea kettle so it doesn't fall down inside and get kind of loosey-goosey and like move around a lot. So it was just a lot of fluffing of the greenery like it is with all little trees and, and wreaths and things this time of year. Uh, and so I did that and then I grabbed some, uh, this is a spool of ribbon head, three different kinds. Uh, two of them were wired in this, uh, gold one, <laughs> I almost said green, uh, gold one is not wired at all. So, but it's a nice, fairly stiff uh, ribbon. So it works really well for this. So I'm just going to cut off the two smaller ones and I'm going to make a little bow for my, uh, my little tree. I was going to use the bigger one too, but I decided to just go ahead and use the two smaller ones. So once I make the bow for that, I have uh, a little sprig of greenery that has a little white apple and um, some just cute little decor on it. And it's just a little a little piece that you'd put on like a, a tree or on a wreath or something. And I decided I wanted to wire that to the top of my little tree and give it a little more depth to the tree and some more decor that was a little bit different. So I'm just using some of my florist wire and I'm gonna wrap it around there and just wire it to the top of my tree.
Once I get the top done with my little sprig of greenery and stuff and the uh, little bow, I started adding some red berries from a little sprig that I had. I just cut them off and then hot glued them on to branches just randomly around my little tree. And I think that brings that red color from the kettle up and makes it look so nice. I also added a little bit of pine cones here and there and uh, just trying to fill it in a little bit. I found some greenery. I had a garland that I've been cutting it off and using it for different things. So I cut a few of the small little branches off and stuck them in where I thought it felt like there was a void in the tree just to make it look fuller. So I would put them in, fold them up, and then hot glue them where I thought they should go, and then tucked them right in there just like that. And I think it made that little tree look a lot fuller. Now I was thinking it was missing something else and even some more red. So I had this little bit of a uh, scarf and I thought it would look beautiful underneath the little tree and kind of like a tree skirt. So I added that and then trimmed around the scarf to make it fit just the way I wanted it to. And I think this was a really nice touch underneath. It just made it look so pretty and festive. I really liked it. So once I got that cut, I started to add a fringe as well. So I just cut it a little bit on the edges, on the front and on the back. And it was just really simple, just with some scissors and just a little cut there. You could make them as long or as short as you wanted to. I just thought it added a nice little touch to it, kind of like a, you know, a scarf. I don't know. I thought it looked kind of cute. So then I had some pieces left over, so I made some tiny little uh, strips of the material. And so they're kind of like little scarves themselves. I don't know, I just thought that they would look good on the tree. So it kind of made everything look like it went together. So I did the little fringes on the ends of the little strips and then I hot glued them in half kind of off to the side so you could see each end. And then I hot glued them and tucked them into the tree here and there. So it all just brought it all together and it looked like it was meant to go together. I just think this came out so pretty. Now I didn't add any, but you certainly could add some little fairy lights or tiny lights to this little tree and that would look so pretty sitting on your counter or even maybe in a bathroom on the counter, anywhere you want it to look fun and festive. I've had this little wire Dollar Tree tree uh, for quite a while. My friend Tracy sent it to me. I actually have two, and I would love to make two of these, but I ran out of the fringe that uh, I have. So I actually used every last little bit of it to do this one tree. I can't believe I had just enough. But my first thing that I'm going to do is take a little scrap of my burlap, and I'm going to wrap it and glue it all around my tree. So I'm gluing the bottom and then going up over and under the uh, wire on that bottom of the tree so that it will stay on. I want this to be fairly, fairly tight. And I really like the little pockets that it leaves up underneath there. And it's going to come in handy at the end. And I will show you why. So they're almost like uh, little holders up underneath there. So you can 
maybe add a set of lights. Yeah, you can. So anyway, all the way around, you just glue up underneath there, glue it to itself, and then I just trim it down as I go. I don't need all this extra material, so I just keep trimming, trimming, trimming. I'm just trying to cut a, a cut it so I have enough to cover the uh, metal on the tree when I put my fringe on so you can't see the inside or any of that metal. So it doesn't have to be neat or pretty because it's going to be covered. So I'm just trying to figure out how to do it without getting a bunch of big bulky pieces. So again, I'm just trimming off any extra and then gluing it together so it stays down really well because that's what your fringe is going to get glued to. And it was pretty simple, just trimming and folding it over here on the very top. And then you can um, fold it and mold it how you want to once you get enough of that material off there. So once that's done, I have this fringe ribbon, I guess you'd call it. I think I ordered this from Timu, but I'm pretty sure you could get this right off Amazon and I'll try and find a link to it. Um, the one that I saw, this is kind of a dupe from one that I saw. My daughter bought one at a thrift store that had green uh, of the fringe and she, she uh, wanted to keep it. I was going to, she was going to give it to me, but she wanted to keep it. And I said, you certainly should keep it. It's very cute. I can make my own, but I don't have any green. So I'm going to just use this burlap color. Again, I think it's really uh, a very primitive little tree, very cute. And I just glue it all the way around so that it stays really well. And when I get to the back, uh, I have a very distinct back on this. There's the back of the burlap and the back of the fringe ribbon. And I cut it right off and then I start a new row. Because I was so afraid I wasn't going to have enough to cover this up and I was going to have to figure out how I was going to uh, finish this off if I didn't have enough. Um, I'm pretty sure that Hobby Lobby has this fringe stuff too. I think I've seen it there. So I will try and link it down in the description if I can find it because this was really fun to work with and it gives it a really cool look. So I went all the way up with it just, just in rows all the way around, glued it on there and went all the way to the very top. And like I said, I used every last bit of it all the way up to the very top. It was so funny that I, I just made it by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> so... Once that was done, I grabbed one of these uh, bows from burlapfabric.com and I will put a link to them down in the description. There is a discount code and uh, they are so cool. They come flat and you just pull the little ribbons that are connected to it and it makes this really cool loopy uh, ribbon and I've used it several times on several different things and it, it was really... I just love using this little this little bow. So I put it at the very top of my tree. I thought it would be a perfect addition to it. And even if it would be really cool if there was a different color, like a red or a green or burgundy, uh, I didn't have that. But I'm going to add some red berries to it. I'm going to add a few at the top and then some at the bottom, kind of off center, so that it looks like they're just kind of going through the bow and then I'll add some greenery as well. So this is where it was really handy to uh, have the little pockets up underneath where I put the burlap up underneath and glued it. There was some spots that didn't totally get glued down and it just made it a nice little spot to put your little controller for your, your tiny lights. And I just popped it right in there, tucked it in that pocket 
and then strung the lights all around the little tree. I love how this came out. This little guy is so cute and it's different. Like I said, it's not green, but not everybody does traditional green and red for Christmas or blue and gold. Sometimes it's more primitive. So I took a piece of cardboard and a little piece of decoupage paper that I had of um, it was just first from some Christmas paper that I had and I decided I was going to make a little tag for my tree. So I glued that down to my piece of cardboard with some Mod Podge and then I trimmed it out the tops, cut the little the corners off to make it look more like a tag, added a hole and then hung this on my little tree and it is finished and so cute. I hope you enjoyed my Christmas winter projects today. Let me know if you have a favorite down in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.